So we are back with our championship score predictions, week 12 coming at you guys, and we got some good games going on this weekend. As always, I'm interested to see what you guys are saying. So all this weekend's games will be in the description down below so that you guys can go ahead and make your score predictions. If you do manage to get anything right, your comment will be included at the start of the next video. Before we do get into it, I want to give a shout out to our sponsors over at OneFootball. Leave a link in the top line of the description down below where you can go ahead and check it out. You can follow all this weekend's games on the OneFootball app. We do have some decent ones coming up this weekend. We're now 14 games into this championship season season this is where we're really starting to see the table shape up at this point in time so one football really cool football that way you can keep up to date with all the latest ongoings i'll leave a link in the description down below but without anything to do let's hop in to this week's goal predictions so starting out with a game going on tonight at oakwell between barnsley and bristol city barnsley currently find themselves on one of their worst runs in the entire club's history 13 games without a win now is that going to change tonight against bristol city i mean it's got to happen sooner rather than later and there is a bit of a chance there although i have liked the look of bristol city so far they're sat six in the championship they're probably not playing the best football that they have done all season at this current point in time it was a 2-2 draw for them at the weekend against Wigan and probably wasn't the best performance I think that maybe we're seeing a couple of the injuries that they have had catching up with them now but there is a real chance in this one for either side to put a statement down I feel like both teams are going to go for it neither side's really got it in their nature to sit back Barnsley if they're going to get all three points that's probably going to come through someone like Corley Woodrow who has probably been their best player so far this season he almost dragged them to all three points in the game they had against West Brom but that one ended as a 2-2 draw. I see goals being scored in this one it's Lee Johnson going back to Barnsley. I think I will back Bristol City to get back to winning ways in this one though I'll say 2-1 to the away side. FIFA saying 1-0 Barnsley. At the moment I'm just not sure where the next win from Barnsley is coming from. Into Saturday we then got Wigan going up against Swansea. Now this one's a fairly tough one to call. Wigan at home so far this season have been very consistent and Swansea on the road have looked fairly good. Swansea at the weekend of course getting back to winning ways with a 1-0 home victory in the South Wales derby against Cardiff. Now, Swansea in that game, I saw a lot of traits from what I was seeing from them at the start of the season. You know, they went on a bit of a rocky patch for a few weeks, but Swansea were really looking back to their best in that game and probably should have gone on to score more than one goal. Going up against this Wigan side, though, who... I think have got fairly unlucky with some of the results they picked up lately. Away at Derby, I thought they put in a decent performance, had quite a few chances, ended up losing that game in the last minute. Against Bristol City, also created a lot of chances away from home, but ended up conceding a goal later than that one to draw. They seem to be creating more chance at the moment, Wigan. It's just they've not really got anyone on form going forward for them, apart from Che Dunkley, who's their centre-back, who's got their top scorer so far with five goals. So, being at the DW, I don't think they'll make it an easy game for Swansea. Swansea will look to stamp their authority on it. Obviously, the away side's got match winning players dotted throughout that squad but Wigan as a unit at home make it very difficult I think that Joe Rodham being out for the next month or so for Swansea is going to be a blow for them but for a score prediction I'm going to go for a 1-1 draw FIFA saying 2-0 Wigan don't think there'll be much to separate those two and then we got Blackburn against Sheffield Wednesday now Blackburn had an absolutely awful month of October no side picked up less points than Blackburn did in that month they'll be looking to put that behind them their last game was an absolute capitulation away at Preston North End I would say that they've been playing a little bit better at Ewood Park than they have done on the road lately but even then they just can't keep a clean sheet to save their life. Christian Walton doesn't find himself on a good run of form at the moment and there were elements of Blackburn's performance against North End which if they can maintain that throughout a whole season and I still think they can be quite successful. You know Sam Gallagher was brilliant for that first half but such I don't know if it's the mentality, the manager there something's not right with them at the moment. Going up against your Sheffield Wednesday side who on the whole I've really liked so far under Gary Monk. I think there's a very good balance to that squad. A lot of Sheffield Wednesday games lately being really low scoring. For their last five matches there's been one or less goal scored in them so this is another one where I see it being maybe fairly low scoring I don't know how the game against Leeds finishes a goalless draw Westwood by the way probably pulling off the save of the season in that match I think that he's been terrific this season for Wednesday in this game against Blackburn though I think it will edge the away side I'm going to go 1-0 Wednesday in this game Thief is going to say 1-1 Blackburn aren't on a good run at the moment I think that Sheffield Wednesday may capitalise on that and then we have Brentford against Huddersfield Brentford finally starting to look like the side that a lot of people imagine they be this season they're on a fantastic run at the moment and so are Huddersfield based off October these two are currently the top two. They've been on a great run each. So this is actually a tough game to split. Obviously, Huddersfield now unbeaten in six, but Brentford really have their mojo back going forward. They've scored nine goals in their last three matches. Side Ben Rama is bang on form at this point in time. In his last three matches, he scored two goals 
and come up with two assists. The game against QPR, they look really fluid going forward and that's the way they've been lately. I think they'll be looking to capitalise on this game being back at Griffin Park. Huddersfield will make it tough. I think that defensively, they look an absolute world apart from where they were at the start of the season. Christopher Schindler, been an absolute rock at the back for them. Their midfield's been operating really well and of course, Colin Grant has been the player who has been scoring the majority of the goals for them. Eight so far for him this season. I don't think there'll be much to separate it. Brentford will want to make this one a really open, expansive game as, you know, when that is the case, they really can look to open sides up. Huddersfield will make it tough for them though. I've really liked the look of both sides lately. I think I'm just going to edge towards Brentford. I'm getting swept up in the Brentford hype again, but I think that with the run there on the moment, I'm they say 2-1. Huddersfield have been playing well. I'll say 2-1 Brentford. FIFA saying 1-0 Brentford. Huddersfield could well pull off a shock in that one, but it should be a fascinating game. Then we've got Cardiff going up against Birmingham. I think that Cardiff are going to want to put last weekend behind them as soon as possible. Being back at home, still unbeaten so far, so they will make it difficult for Birmingham. Birmingham being against Luton, I was pleasantly surprised by some of the football they've been playing. I thought that they looked absolutely brilliant in that game. Their midfield lately have been operating fantastically. I think they got very good balance in there. Obviously, Jude Bellingham, who we've spoke about quite a bit so far, Ivan Sunjic, Dan Crowley who I am an absolutely massive fan and Fran Villalba as well. Obviously all operating off Lucas Djukovic who has been in the goals for Birmingham lately. I think that they will put up a decent game in this one and to be honest I may be edging towards Birmingham in this game. I think that Cardiff at the moment they've still got quite a bit of injuries. They've got Lee Tomlin who's still going to be out for this one. Junior Hoyler and I believe that Glatzel has also picked up a recent injury so won't be available for this game at the weekend. So in terms of forward options for Cardiff they are looking quite a stretch for this one. Although saying that Birmingham's away record lately hasn't been the best. They have lost their last three away matches although in that time they did put in some decent performances I think that I am going to play it safe I'm going to say this one will finish as a 1-1 draw Cardiff like I said still unbeaten at home I'm sure that Warnock will be able to conjure up something and get some out of this game FIFA saying 2-0 Cardiff but I wouldn't rule Birmingham out of that one and next we got Derby going up against Middlesbrough neither side enjoying a good season so far and Derby it been in the news once again for this Richie Keogh situation they have terminated his contract and I mean financially I understand the decision for this one but ethically Derby have had an absolute nightmare with this one obviously to terminate the contract of Richard Keogh but to still carry on paying the wages and playing the likes of Tom Lawrence and Mason Bennett it's, it's been an absolute mess this whole situation for Derby. Leave all your thoughts on what you made in this situation in the comments down below. On and off the pitch, Derby have been a bit of a mess so far this season, but they're going to begin to side in Middlesbrough who have been even more of a mess on the pitch so far. They currently sit in the bottom three and Jonathan Wargate came out with one of the most baffling quotes I think I've ever seen a championship manager give in the week. He said that the league table is lying as Middlesbrough currently sit in the bottom three. Well, I'll tell you one thing that isn't lying. Middlesbrough have only won two matches so far this season and they're currently the league's lowest scorers with 11 goals. This is a game where I don't see a lot of goals being scored and if any side's going to sway it I think I am edging towards Derby to be honest even though they've not been the best so far I think they've got a little bit more than Borough have I'm going to say 1-0 Derby FIFA's going to agree with me Borough need to find points from somewhere but I'm not sure where they're going to come from then we've got Fulham going up against Hull Fulham so far this season have been keeping the pace with the top six but not really paving the way for everyone else like I thought they'd be I'm still a bit mixed on what I've made of Scott Parker so far you know one week we'll see Fulham have an absolutely dazzling performance and then they won't quite follow it up the next week Coming off the back of that goal stroll they had against Middlesbrough where they were down to 10 men for the majority of it. Bettinelli will be back in there after the road that red card for that one. Former at Craven Cottage so far, they have opened up a few sides, but Hull will make it difficult for them. Three wins from their last five. They still remain to be one of the trickiest sides to predict so far this season. They pulled off what you probably would say was an upset a couple of weeks ago against Nottingham Forest away, walking away with all three points with a two and away victory. And who's to say they won't do the same in this one? Fulham on their day, I still think are capable of having flashes of brilliance, you know, Mitrovic being one of the most efficient strikers in the league so far with 11 goals. I think for a score prediction, I'm going to back Fulham for a 2-1. FIFA's going to say 1-0 Hull. With Hull, who knows what's going to happen. Then we've got Leeds going up against QPR. Leeds having a bit of interesting news throughout midweek. I believe that Pablo Hernandez is back for selection for this game and what a boost that's going to be. I think that, I mean, to be honest, even in terms of creativity, maybe they've not been so bad. It's just been Leeds' conversion rate lately. I saw an absolutely baffling stat the other day. Out of Leeds' last 107 shots, they've scored three Three goals from open play. Absolutely crazy that. Obviously, there's been the whole Patrick Bamford debate, and he might actually be missing this weekend. I think he has picked up an ankle injury throughout the week. So if Eddie Nketiah is finally given his chance, I think he's going to take it. He's looked like a fantastic striker whenever I have seen him play. But he also has been speaking also in midweek about the possibility of getting both Bamford and Nketiah into the same lineup. And I don't know why we've not seen that so far this season. You know, Nketiah leading the line with Bamford playing behind him in that number 10 role. Bamford can press from there, get on the ball 
hold up the ball like he's good at doing. And then you got Enketia on as that natural finisher. Going up against QPR though, won't be an easy one for this game. Although QPR's last couple of results have been a little bit dodgy. A 2-2 draw against Reading and then losing the game on Monday night against Brentford by three goals to one. They still bring a real attacking threat into this game. I think that although they do have a couple of deficiencies at the back, still been one of the best sides to watch so far this season going forward. It's two really good midfields going up against each other. But I think that with Leeds having Pablo back, I'm just going to edge them. I'm going to say 1-0 Leeds. With Leeds lately, there doesn't tend to be a lot of goals scored. I'll say 1-0. FIFA's going to agree with me. Interesting game to watch out for. And next up, we've got Luton going up against Forrest. Forrest back in action after missing last week after the game against Reading was called off. But interestingly enough, both these sides have lost their last two games. So it's a good chance for either of them to get back to winning ways in this one. Luton, although their last two games have been on the road, generally their home form has been strong so far. Their last home match beating Bristol City by three or snail. And they are continuing to score a lot of goals as the season has gone. And they're going to against Nottingham Forest side who a couple of weeks ago were in a really good position. They were second in the championship and they had two fairly simple games on paper, you'd probably say, you know, against Hull and against Wigan. And then they've ended up tumbling down the table. After having a week off though, I'm, I'm not sure if some of the players will be returning yet from injury. I'm not seeing that confirmed, but Forrest should be in a stronger position going into this one. I think it's going to be the sort of game where both sides are going at each other. I can't see either side wanting to sit back and it's going to be one where both sides are aiming for all three points. I think there will be goals scored and I'm going to go for a 2-2 draw in this game. FIFA's going to say 1-0 Luton. It's an interesting one. I think that when Forrest do pick themselves back up, they will go on another quite decent run because I like what I saw from them earlier on this season. But for the time being, I'll say 2-2 for this one. They've got Reading going up against Millwall. Now, there's another game where I don't see there being all too much in this, actually. Obviously, Reading missed last week as well. They had the game postponed against Nottingham Forest. Under Mark Bowen so far, they've actually really surprised me with their performances they come up with. They beat North End and had a 2-2 draw against QPR where they were probably the better side in that game. I think they've been playing some really good football going forward. And after seeing Ajari live in the flesh, from that game I went to at Reading. I understand the hype about him now. All the play goes through him and he's going to be a real danger man for the rest of the season. But Millwall at the moment, I think he's going fairly well. They've only lost one out of their last five matches and I think that Gary Rowett may turn out to be a really shrewd appointment for Millwall. I think that those two could gel really well together. Jed Wallace at the moment on fantastic form but Tom Bradshaw is certainly the player to watch. Absolutely on fire at the moment with his goal scoring streak and he's going to be a player who Reading are going to have to watch out for. I don't think there'll be all too much in this one though. I think that both both sides have attacking potency, although neither are quite yet the finished article. For this one, I'm going to go for a 1-1 draw. Thief is going to say 1-0 Reading, a closely contested game. Then into Sunday where we've got Charlton going up against North End. Now, as a Preston fan, I'm not taking this game lightly. Charlton so far, their record against the top six, they played a lot of them. And on the whole, their record's been very good. You know, a 2-2 draw against West Brom last weekend, 2-2 against Fulham. They beat Leeds at the Valley. So this one's going to be a tough one. Preston, although still the top scorers in the league with 27 goals so far this season. The game of the weekend, absolutely miraculous comeback after probably the worst 45 minutes of football I've seen so far this season. The second half against Blackburn was absolutely fantastic. We turned that on going forward and... It would only be fair to talk about Tom Barcus and the form that he currently finds himself in. Two goals in that game against Rovers, the second being an absolutely sublime finish. His pace going forward has always been a threat, and all the Preston fans have always known about that, but what he's adding now to his game is that ruthlessness, is that end product, and I would love it if he can continue this form for the rest of the season because he could be on for his highest scoring season yet. Yeah. Speaking of goals for this one though, I do see quite a few being scored. Obviously, Patrick Bell for North End is going to be going back to the Valley for the first time, so that should be an interesting one. Bell, by the way, I mean, I could highlight any Preston flair. I think they've all been fantastic so far, but Patrick Bell for me, definitely been in our top three players so far. I think that he's immensely improved us at the back, but he's going to have a job on his hands to keep some of Charlton's attacking outlets quiet for this one. Bond at the moment, been on brilliant form. Gallagher in midfield, someone I'm looking forward to watching. I think it'll be an open game. I think there'll be goal scored. North End on the road so far, don't have the best record. We've only won one away match so far but I think this one will be competitive. I'm going to say 2-2. FIFA's going to say 1-0 Charlton. And then to round things off with Monday's game between Stoke and West Brom. Now Nathan Jones found himself in a bit of an odd situation at the moment because there are been managers being linked with the Stoke job despite him still being in the job and Jose Gomez, the former running manager has been the latest man linked to that Stoke job. Stoke fans, would you like to see that happen? Let me know down below. I quite like Jose Gomez from last season but things at Reading seem to turn a bit sour for him this time. Going up against West Brom though who are currently sat top of the league. I've caught a few glimpses of West Brom so far and for you know short passages of play they have been playing some scintillating stuff at times. I think that Stoke will really struggle to close them down for this one obviously. Stoke's performance at the weekend, a 2-0 loss at Millwall 
probably up there as their worst performance of the season so far. There was really nothing, you know, no real positives I could take from that game. It was a really sloppy one from their point of view. Being back at home though, they put in a few decent performances lately. I think this one will be really telling to see that if the players still are behind Jones for this one, if they do put in the performance for it. But with the quality that West Brom have coming into this game, I really can't see a way past them. So I'm going to back the away side for a 2-1 victory. With FIFA saying, it'll be a goalless draw. But guys, there you have it. There are all the games that are going on this weekend. So as always, leave your score predictions in the comments down below. I'm interested to see what you guys are saying for these ones. But apart from that, that will not wrap it up for today's video. So if you think you want to enjoy, make sure you leave a like. It is always massively appreciated. Make sure you subscribe for some regular championship content. But apart from that, thanks very much for watching. And I'll see you all in the next one.